the doc and I, we come from a similar generation. When we were children, there was very few medications out there. Um, there you know, I got a, a sugar lump when I was a child for uh, polio, but that was about it. There was no, you know, I remember when I had measles, um, the Dr. O'Brien came around, he put his magic stick under your thong and you kind of touch your forehead. And he said, you know what, measles is a mild infection. Just spend the week in the room and you'll be fine. And our school was closed down, everybody had measles and uh, there was a problem. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Hillary here, he had measles as well, without problems. And uh, what year did you have measles? Uh, I had measles, but many people didn't survive measles. Well... I worked in a, a school for the deaf called St Thomas's in Hampshire, and 90% of those children were congen had congenital deafness of, of some profound uh, profundity. Um, they, they had holes in the heart, they had brain damage because their mothers had congenital rubella, German measles, which you well, would say okay, is okay. a trivial infection. OK, now, that's... Uh, rubella is another issue, right? But they're um, not... Your daughters aren't immunised against rubella, are they? Uh, well, OK, rubella is more... Rubella isn't a dangerous disease unless... It is. A pre wait, it is. Uh, wait, wait. Unless a pregnant woman is exposed to it and then it can have effect and on the fetus. So, so why not immunise your so, daughters against so, that to prevent well, them having well, a risk of it? And when, when they get... We went to the doctor to have blood tests to see if they have antibodies um, against rubella. Mm. But I've brought here... This is the British Medical Journal, 1959. OK? And here it says... It's a bit out of date. No, but the point is there was 41,000 cases of measles that week. And it says here, in the last 10 years, so there was about half a million cases of measles, and they say no serious side effects. None, right? Maybe they didn't know at that point. You see, I think that's the problem with some of these illnesses, that it is, you would well, say... Well, measles is a notifiable... As time goes on. Sorry, yeah. measles is yeah. a notifiable disease. So that if you look here, for it, it says... OK, well, I 41... A... The writer, so they asked in the British Medical yes. Journal, they asked the doctors to come in and write about measles, whether it was serious. These writers agree that measles is nowadays normally a mild infection. Normally. Yeah. And they rarely... But there was no side effects. And look, it's... Yeah, what okay. was the treatment? It is the frequent <laughs> okay. visiting Look. of the interested clinician and not Richard, the therapy which Richard, produces good just results. just explain why it is if your baby had whooping cough and the doctor said there was a risk of death, you chose not to keep her no, in hospital. No, the risk of death was the children who went into hospital. So, according to the medical why? literature, 75% of the children who went into hospital... Well, why would with you want to... Hang on, what, let me what finish. Parents that, no, 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 wait. Why you would want to expose your children to any risk? Because a natural instinct in a parent is to go, if there's something that can ease or prevent something in my child, I will take it. Because and that's what modern medicine gives us. Yes, but it, they got whooping cough, right? That gave them lifetime immunity against... It doesn't. The, OK. Do you know how many people died of whooping cough last year globally? 195,000. Yeah, but, OK, if we want to... OK, and where were those people? I've worked in Cuba, right? Fidel Castro came into Cuba, he introduced a vaccination programme. Within a year, it had, had a dramatic effect on infant mortality. So I have seen, I know the benefits of vaccination programmes. So but but we're not living in Cuba. 